Hello, and thanks for joining me on another episode of Leadership Bits, where every bit counts. Today, I'd like to talk to you about setting your new managers to succeed. I'm mainly going to talk about new team leads and directors that you are appointing in your company, but if you are yourself a new manager, I think you're going to find some very valuable lessons here. So just listen on, all right? Now, picture this. A very common scenario I see across many of my clients is that you ultimately take a teammate and promote them to become managers of their own teams, right? Maybe because their team lead is being promoted, maybe the team leader is leaving, I don't know why, but you have this person that you know is good managerial material and you want to promote them. Sounds great, after all, because you're saying to yourself, well, they're going to hit the ground running way faster, it's going to be easier because they know everyone, they know the material, they know everything. It's going to save me so much time and effort and we can just get to it, right? Sounds good. Doing this, you have to realize that you're putting your managers, newly minted managers, keep in mind, in a very, very hard place socially wise. Because it means that these managers, who are usually less experienced, now need to provide candid feedback, push for improvements, and to even tell someone to stop being late to meetings where these people used to be their own friends and comrades up to a couple of weeks ago. The change from a friend to a manager is not a simple one and I have to say and admit that I think in the vast majority of cases I've seen, the old friends remain friends and that means that there's not enough managerial relationship. To be frank, in most cases what I saw is that the relationship doesn't change enough and ends up with not being professional enough, meaning that the manager will not push these people as hard for change and improvement as they will new employees and people that didn't get to work with them on the same team prior. Things usually get better with time as the team grows and people change and the manager eventually has more people on the team that know them as a manager than as a friend, but in virtually every team I saw, there is still that single person who used to be theirs from the, the olden days, and that specific person usually gets special treatment, not because they are a senior who is worthy of having the autonomy of doing whatever they feel like doing because they do it well, but simply because that manager doesn't want to clash with, the, with their friends. And that is something that I think can very, very harm the team eventually because people see what that specific person can do and don't know why it's not the same for them. To be honest, if you're asking me what I recommend, I usually recommend promoting a cross instead of promoting someone within their own team. So take them from their team and put them in charge of a different team. It doesn't have to be a team in the whole other side of the organization. It can be people that they know, but ultimately you'd rather it not be their own friends. When you promote a cross, yes, it's going to take more time and more effort, but I guarantee that it's going to create healthier relationships all the way over. And even more so, another very big advantage that I see and that I love seeing in organizations as they grow is that instead of having the same people being stuck in the same part of the organization, you get them to move around. And by moving them around, you're getting new blood inside the teams, and yet you're not having to you know, bring on completely new people to the organization who don't know so much about it. Having this new old blood inside of a team means that someone who is aware of a lot of things still has a fresh perspective and can push things forward. Promoting someone within the same team often leads to not enough change. People just keep on doing more of the same, which is something I dislike. When you have a growing organization and you want to cultivate innovation, you have to ensure that your leaders keep plowing forward and thinking differently and reviewing what they've been doing and not doing things the way it's been done for the sake of just rolling with momentum. You want to make sure that your leaders and management actually push the whole organization forward. And for them to do that, 
they have to believe that there are different ways to do things. They can't come and just expect to keep on gliding the way things have been done. Now, I know what you might be thinking. I have to promote that person inside that specific team. I cannot promote across, all right? It happens. To do that properly, you have to execute like a pro. You want a very quick transition. Immediately put one-on-ones on the calendar between the new manager and their old team to discuss personal development. The new manager in those one-on-ones should be clear. Here's what you're currently doing. Here's what I know that you've discussed on improving on. Let's discuss how we're going to improve. What do you think we should do differently in this team? I want to be very clear. I want to make this team even better and I need your help. And if you think of anything we should do together, let me know because I want to get this done. Practice this hard conversation with the new manager, especially if they are inexperienced and have never managed before. As the leader in the organization, you need to push this newly minted manager to practice the hard conversation, either with you or with a teammate, meaning a different manager. The hard conversation should consist of a very clear script about the different questions that you expect and how to answer some very specific needs of the specific people in the team because that new manager hopefully actually knows them best. I know that role plays in our industry are seen as something very awkward and yet whenever I do them with people we see how valuable they are in bringing you to the conversation way more prepared and delivering it in a very professional manner. You shouldn't rehearse it like three days, and yet you should know what you're going to talk, what are the key takeaways you want them to take, and what are your most important goals. Now, I'm talking to you, and right now specifically, I'm saying how you should advise that new manager before they start doing all those conversations. The most important thing to remember is that this transition needs to happen quickly and professionally. The new manager hopefully can even be direct enough to say, I know we are friends, but I need you with me on this and to have this professionalism between us. It requires cooperation to succeed, and if you do not execute on the transition as fast and as good as you can, you will miss your train. Fixing it later is going to be a lot harder. So to recap, if you can, promote across, if you must, Practice the promotion and make sure that it's going to be delivered the best way you can. You owe it to the new manager to setting them up to succeed and also to the entire team under them. I hope you enjoyed this. If you had any ideas, any feedback, feel free to email me. I read every email. Just look at the show notes. Thank you very much for joining me on another episode of Leadership Bits. Subscribe if you haven't yet and talk to you soon.